All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Raul Cepeda Jr. On behalf of Barcodes Group, Byte, and ELO, I'd like to thank you for attending our webinar today on the benefits of Android in hospitality and retail. Uh, we know your time is precious and we hope you gain some valuable insights today into the solution that we'll be covering. We do have a Q&A feature available on this webinar, so please feel free to send us any questions along the way and we'll address them uh, towards the end as time allows. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Jeff Hong, co-founder of Byte. Jeff? Thank you so much, Raul. I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. Uh, and I'm thrilled here to uh, talk a little bit more about benefits of hospitality of Android. Um, and one thing my company uh, does a lot of. Uh, but before I really kick it off any further, I'd love to introduce uh, Joanna, uh, who is one of uh, my favorite customers and uh, work very closely. And she's currently the IT director at Fizzoli's. Uh, so we'll explore her side of the story in just a moment. All right, so um, just a bit of background uh, about my company, Byte. Uh, so we like to bill ourselves as the most intelligent omnichannel ordering platform. So what that really means is that, hey, we'll take care of helping guests order and your order experience, whether you're in a restaurant or at a university or in a hotel. Um, anytime you use a kiosk, um, or it could be using um, uh, web ordering or allowing guests to even use their own mobile phones. So if it's anything ordering related, uh, my company Byte really helps uh, enable customers to do so. And currently we work with some of the best uh, and kind of uh, coolest brands in the industry, uh, Fazoli's you'll hear from today, uh, and then some of our other clients in universities, uh, office catering, uh, and other quick service restaurants and fast casual concepts. Uh, so I'm thrilled to have um, such a robust and established customer base. And uh, when we start digging into what made Byte a little bit more successful was really the um, kind of drive and momentum from the entire industry of adapting self-ordering technology and something you guys are here to learn about today. So when we embarked on uh, delivering kiosks for quick service restaurants, we noticed a kind of three main pillars of uh, very tangible benefits. The first one is that uh, by allowing guests to self-order, it actually raises the average check. Um, and at Byte, we've seen average check increases uh, from 10% to 50%, and it can even go beyond that. So we're seeing a really good uptake there. The second is uh, by adapting, um, uh, sorry, adopting kiosk technology, we're allowing restaurant operators to operate more effectively and efficiently and uh, reduce their, some of their expenditures they might incur with labor um, and also staff appropriately. Uh, you can handle the peaks and troughs of uh, kind of the lunch and dinner models um, by enabling kiosks to help share some of that burden of uh, guest ordering. And finally, we're driving more throughput through the industry as well. Um, just you're enabling more points of service and more points of interaction. Uh, so previously you might've had a bottleneck because you could only have two cashiers. Well, guess what? You can put in three, four or five kiosks and really enable your kitchen to produce a bit more effectively and serve guests faster. So when we started doing this, um, business. Uh, actually, I'll admit that I built it in iOS first in uh, Apple's platform. And very quickly on, we discovered, hey, there are some limitations and we should explore Android. Uh, and the first reason that we chose to explore Android uh, to really start building out my business was the availability and adaptability of the hardware. Uh, as you are well aware, uh, Apple is really only develops a couple models of iPads, and that was our predominant use case uh, before. So then we had a couple of screen sizes that we could really build on. Uh, but with Android, you're not limited by the screen size anymore. You can go from something as small as a seven inch screen that's a handheld for even your team members to use, or it can go up to the larger 40, 50 inch screens that can take up the size of a wall. Um, and it really allows you that flexibility of, and understanding what type of statement you want your restaurant to make and what type of experience you want your guests to be able to have. Um, if it's very uh, something like shareable, you want to also use that real estate, screen real estate to advertise when it's periods of low traffic, you might opt for a larger screen and play a video on it. Um, so we're seeing a lot of different use cases and uh, different desires from our customers. And that kind of um, 
experience allows us uh, to really cater to what they want. The second piece is actually the peripherals. So with Android, you're actually able to have um, different peripherals attached to it. A lot of our uh, devices have a USB port at the back and on the sides. So we can connect other things like printers, uh, scales, um, webcams, uh, temperature sensors. So there's a lot of um, options and things that we can just easily bolt on to an Android screen that is not always accessible with other types of platforms. The second advantage of building on Android is the supportability. Uh, and there's a few very cool features that um, are baked into the Android software. Uh, and ELO in particular allows us to uh, explore a bit further. So the first one is a, what I deemed as control and remote capability. So I can see what's happening on the screen and my support team can then control, take, it, take the entire screen over, take the device over uh, and really help troubleshoot our clients when they get stuck. I, I know that uh, our team at Byte chases perfection, but we're not often very perfect. Uh, so having that um, additional tool to control the screen and see what's going on in real time uh, is invaluable to us. The second advantage for support related uh, issues is versioning. Uh, sometimes we'll like to do a custom build for a particular customer um, that they might have a, want, a, want a particular feature um, or a particular integration. Um, with other platforms, uh, controlling which device gets which version and worse after if you have to update it, it can be a complete mess. Um, we don't have a team of technicians to go into the field to update each uh, device individually. So we can do it in, within our own uh, command center uh, and we can select which devices get which update. Um, and if people need to jump versions, that can be done as well. If we need to force updates at a particular day and time, um, we can also do that. And a lot of our restaurants operate uh, pretty long hours. Uh, so for us, we can schedule uh, the updates and any version uh, controls that need to happen at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Uh, so it minimizes the interference with uh, any operations. And finally, the last reason that I want to share is really the breadth of software uh, development. And in particular, um, iOS has, uh, I don't know if you all know this, but has a gatekeeper um, that's Apple, and they will require two days to turn around uh, any updates that you might pass through. Well, with Android, you don't necessarily have to go through that type of um, gatekeeping effect. You can build something, release it immediately. Uh, and that speed has allowed us to become very effective at solving problems quickly, uh, but also uh, making changes for our customers um, when sudden needs arise. The second piece is the integration opportunity. So almost every company that we work with has an Android SDK. Uh, and these are um, necessary for building out payment integrations, hardware integrations like scales and printers. Um, and that's not always available in all platforms. Uh, Windows was another popular one that had a lot of support. But as a lot of companies are now younger uh, startups, they're not really building against a Windows infrastructure either. Uh, so if you're looking for new tools, chances are they would have offered it in an Android and sometimes an iOS SDK. Uh, but just by nature of having the largest install base of mobile devices, Android gives you that flexibility uh, to do more with it. Uh, now I'd love to bring in uh, Joanna and we can talk about uh, her experience at implementing uh, Android devices and, key, and specifically Byte kiosks at Fazoli's. So uh, Joanna, I'll ask if you can unmute yourself uh, while we talk about a couple questions. Thanks for the reminder, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, so the first uh, question is, uh, why did you consider uh, implementing kiosks in the first place? And why did you consider like upgrading your ordering experience? Uh, Afternoon, everybody. Um, the first thing we at Fazoli's have, we've seriously invested in our IT and our infrastructure over the last few years, really bringing up what was an extremely antiquated system. Um, we've invested a lot into our POS technology and the integrated systems. One of the things that we really liked about Byte um, 
as time went on, we've integrated with more third party vendors and really brought all of those so that our POS is the hub. Um, it gives us a lot of flexibility. We, one of our focuses is really accommodating the guests and being able to have an ordering solution for each type of guest. You know, some of them really want to place an order online. Some of them, we've been around for 28 years. Some of them are very, very loyal guests, which we're thankful for. And they're more comfortable going to a cashier in person. Some of them, more of the younger groups, are much more comfortable going to a self-service kiosk. And we just really wanted to make sure that we're able to provide those options for our guests and make them as comfortable as possible. Um, obviously, with we were a little bit ahead of the game. We started our first restaurants in 2019. So our group has had the pleasure of working with Bite for the last just over two years. Um, we started before the whole COVID situation um, and got our teams and our guests starting to get used to the idea of it. And then it was just so helpful for us once everything happened um, we were able to really utilize those kiosks. People were feeling much more comfortable at the time. You know, you can put all the safeguards in place that are available, masks and gloves and plexiglass, but having the bike kiosk with a UVC light that's sanitizing it, it really put a lot of our guests more at ease, and, and that's our goal overall. That was definitely making it easier and, you know, a constant upsells. It's a consistent upsell opportunity. Uh, honestly, we use it as a little bit of a POP solution. So we'll, we'll use the menu cover to focal point on special items that are coming out or brand new items, things like that. The graphics, just getting what a guest, getting what an entree looks like in front of the guest. Um, so we had a, we had a lot of benefits with it. We had, we had a couple of things in mind, but we we got a lot more benefits I think out of it than we originally even anticipated. That's great. You brought up a few interesting points, and uh, I didn't want to gloat too much, but since you brought them up, uh, I can dig a little uh, deeper there. Uh, the first was uh, during COVID, uh, Fazoli's approached to bite and asked. Hey, um, with the uh, spread um, and people being more uh, cautious in terms of what they want to interact with, um, we want to improve safety measures. And uh, we were able to source a UVC light or help source rather a UVC light that can clip onto um, the Android interface. And um, it's we, as we're searching through options, we found that there are a lot of peripherals that uh, worked with the Android form factor and specifically ELO's form factor. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it gave us, we didn't have to customize or ask people to custom build things. Uh, there were a lot of off the shelf components that were readily, readily available. Uh, this, yeah, yeah, for us, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, the, the UVC lights that you guys were helping us with, it was literally plug and play. We had them shipped to our operators. Our managing partners were installing them in the, in the restaurants for us. Um, you know, the, even things like credit cards, moving to a different credit card platform, all we had to do was change out a base. All we had to do was change out the mount for it and everything else works just as it did before. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's really nice to hear. Um, the second point that uh, Joanna mentioned that I want to reiterate was um, the ability to use the kiosk, uh, not necessarily just as an order taking uh, mechanism, but it's also uh, one, helping to drive recommendations and drive up the average check, and two, using it as a POP to help promote um, their latest uh, seasonal offers. So uh, it's, um, it's, you're taking something that didn't have any marketing uh, space before and you're creating a new um, guest awareness and guest education tool. Um, so that is that is and a very nice we've bonus. Seen a, we've seen a fairly consistent um, increase over the last couple of years above what our regular in-store PPA is. Um, we have seen a little bit of a bump from those placed on the kiosk. And for us, we have plenty of POP screens in the restaurants that filter through, you know, nine, 10 images, but to have that one item that we really want to focus on being on the kiosk cover screen 
So even our, our, our kiosks are countertop mounted. We don't really do the freestanding ones, but having that countertop mount with that image on there, even when somebody is not on the kiosk, while people are in line, they're still seeing that image and seeing those fried mozzarella cubes and, Hey, those look really good. You know, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great tool for us in general, for sure. Awesome. Uh, so we talked a bit about the highlights of uh, choosing to upgrade your experience and um, kind of why uh, you might have picked us. Uh, what are some of the lowlights or challenges that you had with uh, deploying? Um, I think in the very beginning, the biggest challenge with the deployment was the adoption from the guests. Uh, like I said, we're very long term, 20 something years, we had already been in business. Our guests weren't used to seeing anything like this. They were comfortable with going to a cashier at the time. Um, and that was probably our biggest struggle. We did work though with the team at Byte who, how long, maybe within a matter of a month or two, were able to turn around a new feature for us. Um, and we started promoting for every guest that used the kiosk, every order over X amount, we would include a free cookie. So they built a feature for us that would accommodate that request. And we, that, you know, it's it, not to say that we were buying them, but that trial for what a cookie would cost, getting them to try it was absolutely worth it. And we do that at the beginning for each store when we originally implemented um, we do that offer for about a month or so just to get the trial. But once, once the guest started using it, it was a super quick guest experience. It's super simple to use. Um, you know, a couple of buttons. If, you, if you're not one of those guests that has a lot of changes that they need to make, because we do limit what we expose on the kiosk as far as available modifiers and things like that. It's extremely customizable. Um, we do limit it a little bit. But it's a, it's a super easy, super quick guest experience, you know, as a line buster station or just somebody coming in, you want to order one item. And the, our guests really adopted to it well after we got that first trial attempt. They, they really adopted to it well. But that, that first adoption was a little bit more difficult in the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and one thing to note is that guest behavior is sticky. Um, it's like almost any other habit. As soon as someone gets exposure to it once, there might be some hesitation. You do it the second time. And if there's a tangible offer, um, a tangible benefit for the guest, they'll do it two, three times. And uh, pretty soon that's become second nature to them. So um, that, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, the sure. last question I had for you today was, uh, from your perspective as an operator, um, what tips would you give to someone who might You're be considering out, doing the same right. thing? <laughs> um, so the, the big things that we, or that I would take as a takeaway, the best tips that we were, um, that we've come up with and working with Byte, a lot of them were suggestions that we worked on collaboratively, but having somebody, you have to spend a little money to make money. Um, having somebody for those first couple weeks, at least, that's sort of available, guiding people to the kiosk and helping them, you know, walking them through if they have questions, really having your management teams explain it to your staff, how does this work and those kinds of things. Um, but what we would do was we would keep somebody up at the counter and have, you know, people pull as a line grew, we'd have that extra person kind of pull, hey, would you like to come over and try our new self-service kiosk? You know, you cut the line a little bit and just guide them over that way and kind of encourage them instead of just some people looking at it, um, get it used. And then as people see others in line, it would help guide them over. And there's always that person, if somebody did have a question for the first couple of weeks, um, but I would definitely suggest the, for us, like I said, we did a free cookie with X spend. I think that was hugely helpful in the adoption rate. And then having that person that was able to kind of cherry pick a couple of guests as the lines got a little bit long. Um, I think that was super helpful. Thank you. 
Yeah, um, we definitely saw the results after your cookie uh, promo idea, and um, we're very <laughs> encouraged by it. So uh, we've also taken that same uh, tactic and uh, kind of trained our other customers to do this, something very similar. Um, so really great to hear that that worked out. Um, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining me today, Joanna. I uh, want to kick it back to Rule, uh, who will t introduce a little bit more about the ELO uh, experience and the uh, ELO Touch portfolio. Thanks, Jeff. And, and Johanna, again, thanks for joining and, and um, providing some input on your experience there. So when we uh, we talk about you know the full solution, um, you know Barcodes and Bytes also partners with um, Elo here to provide a comprehensive touch portfolio. Uh, it includes a range of 10 to 65 inch uh, and a wide variety of touch computers that that span around all the different operating systems, whether it's Android, Windows, Linux. Um, in addition to the touch monitors and computers, as mentioned below uh, before, we offer some kiosks, floor stands, management software, and then obviously a wide range of accessories like the barcode scanners. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, Jeff. It's also clear uh, that customer and consumer purchasing habits uh, have changed over the last 18 months. This is really the case in the QSR space where self-service technologies are being adopted by businesses and consumers. Some statistics show that more than 70% of consumers have tried self-checkout and more than half of those users plan to continue doing so uh, because of the ease of use and the convenience. So this is something that's shaping up in the QSR space and we're continuing to address it based on customer demand. Next slide. And then one solution that's really led the way, as you've all probably experienced, is contactless pickup. Nearly half of our consumers have used a version of contactless pickup for the first time as a result of COVID-19. With 83% of consumers stating that convenience shopping and pickup is more important now than it was five years ago, having a seamless and contactless pickup experience is becoming more of a must-have than a nice-to-have. So again, addressing your customer's concerns should be you know, first and foremost, one of your biggest uh, priorities out there and contactless pickup is becoming one of, those, uh, one of those needs. Next slide. So now that you've learned a little bit about Byte uh, and Elo's offering, you might be asking yourself, how does Barcodes Group fit into everything? So as an elite you know, partner of Elo, uh, the different Barcodes Group's entities offer design, deploy, and support services that are required to get these solutions implemented uh, and maintained. So from a design and deployment standpoint, we have a uh, highly uh, experienced professional services team that can conduct on-site assessments uh, that enable us to design a customized solution based on your, um, your environment. And then we work with ELO and Byte to develop and integrate a full hardware and software solution to meet your needs, and more importantly, alleviate the pain points that you might have. From a support standpoint, uh, we deploy all the hardware, uh, whether that's ELO, the touch screens, the kiosks, the barcode scanners. We can offer what we call our true support services, which include a mixture of help, help desk support for your employees, configuration, staging, and a bunch of other value add services. Uh, we do have a ex very experienced staff to deliver troubleshooting and repair services for all the hardware that's associated with the deployment. And then as North America's largest supplier of consumables, we have um, a lot of barcode labels, receipt paper, ribbon, print head, and other things ready to go on the shelf to make sure that you're always uh, in stock at your different facilities. So ultimately our goal is to partner with your business to get you up and running, but more importantly, we wanna keep you up and running with you know, future-proof technologies like those that you saw today. Um, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into um, the Q&A uh, feature. So we have a few questions here. Um, the first one, I think, um, Johanna, I guess I'll pose this to you, uh, is we have uh, an attendee that asks, which loyalty program do you use at Fazoli's? Uh, we are currently integrated with Punch as our loyalty program. Yeah. 
Uh, the second question I have here is, how do you inform the guest of the offer for first time users? Uh, for from our standpoint, we actually added because we design our own menu screen images. So we added a little call out on the menu screen image itself. So the first thing that they guess would see would be our, for example, it was our promo item or LTO item. And then there was a little badge on there that called out free cookie with the purchase. Thank you. And then the last question we have here um, is what is your lead time on hardware right now? Uh, and I could take that one. So obviously, you know, we're, we're all experiencing uh, what we all uh, are seeing is global supply chain issues right now with, um, with hardware. So I, I could tell you that, you know, from our standpoint, there are devices that we hold in stock, um, but we are seeing some rather lengthy um, lead times on, on some touch screens because of chipsets and other shortages out there. So we've seen upwards of 20 weeks uh, on some of these things. But, um, but you know, you can feel free to reach out to barcodes. We always have options out there. You know, we might have to modify the configuration a little bit, um, but in most cases, we've been able to uh, provide some solution for, for most of our customers out there that, that'll fit their need. And the more we can obviously forecast and know when we have to get a deployment rolled out, uh, the more we can make sure that we, we have the product in stock. Uh, let me see, I got one, um, let's see, I think we got one more question uh, and I'll, I'll pose this one, I guess. Uh, on the same topic of adoption, how did employees respond to adding kiosks into stores? So Jeff, I don't know if you wanna answer that one. Uh, so I, I only have uh, my perspective uh, from being the software provider um, and, We've seen it as we've actually explained it a few different ways, depending on the service models of uh, where the kiosks are going into. In some cases, it gives uh, employees an opportunity to get out from behind the uh, cashier's um, counter and interact with guests more um, and play up to some of their strengths and having that guest interaction um, because they're freed up, they can go around, circle the dining rooms, uh, help offer additional services if they need to, like, can I fill up a drink or um, can I help you out with ordering at the kiosk like Johanna mentioned. So we've seen a bit of uh, kind of redistributing and reallocating some of the straight cashier um, staff. We've also heard um, folks had some resistance to it, uh, unsurprisingly, that is, is a concern as well. Uh, and we've seen it usually be addressed um, kind of a couple months um, after the kiosks have been around for a bit. Uh, they're more comfortable seeing it and using it and to know that, hey, ultimately some guests al always wanna pay cash. And uh, unfortunately that is a limitation for Byte where we don't really support any cash machines um, or the ability to accept cash. Uh, and there are certain things that you still want a cashier to help out with, right? So um, I don't think it's going to a completely cashierless environment, but how do we enable um, our operator partners uh, staff to have more meaningful uh, guest interactions? So Johanna, I don't know if you've um, heard or seen anything from your own experience as well. No, I would second what, what you had. Um, we, our cashiers our cashiers were very comfortable with it. Um, like I said, we use it more for line busting when the line got long. Um, it did, it allowed our, our team members, our managers to be able to get out from behind the, the counters and actually do, we, you know, we do, we're known for our breadsticks. It's our signature item get out there and do breadstick runs and follow up with guests and make sure that they're having a good dining experience. And where before they were, kind of, they were stuck behind that counter. They had to be back there in case somebody walked in the door. Um, you know, still keeping an eye out if somebody walks in and they're standing up at the counter, but 
these days, a lot more people are going over to the kiosk when they come in. They don't see somebody behind the counter. They'll go right over to the kiosk, place their order, and go on. Our, our team members really, our team members adopted it very well. All right, perfect. Well, I think that concludes um, the Q&A portion here. Um, thanks again, everybody, for joining. Uh, so on behalf of Bar uh, Barcodes Group, Elo and Byte, you know, we'd like to thank you for joining the webinar today on the benefits of Android. Um, and if you have any further questions or would like one of our experts to reach out for a free consultation or demo, please feel free to reach out to your preferred solution provider on the screen here or you can feel free to reach out to me directly uh, via the contact information on the screen as well. Thanks again, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.